Now, you're watching Wave 3 News Listens Live. And it is a celebration. With your host, John Ramsey. And welcome into the Monday edition of Wave 3 Listens Live. Hope you had a fantastic weekend. Let's take a look at the rundown. Lots of good information as usual. Kentucky Anna Crime Stoppers, you know the number 582 Clue. Dave Yates is here and Major Mike Littlefield, and we've got their boss also here to talk about Louisville's most wanted. Uh, motorcycle safety, yes, it's that time of year you want to get out on the motorcycle. Safety tips from Kaufman and Stigger injury lawyers. And the Heiser Hearing Institute is open and serving the community. They've been open the entire time. Brett Bachman is here, and he is the CEO of the Heiser Hearing Institute, and we're always happy to have Brett in the house. Uh, Brett, before we get started, on a personal note, getting closer and closer to that we, uh, that wedding, yes. are, are, are you ready to roll? Are you ready to make that commitment? There is so much to a wedding <laughs> I had no idea about, bro. I mean, I'm sitting there, we're looking at flowers and colors and tables and crepery or whatever that stuff is called. So, uh, yes, it's been a learning lesson for me. Uh, my uh, fiance and wife and girlfriend, they're all together. Uh, one person though, but <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. You saved yourself there. I know, but well, with all the good you do in the community, I'm sure it'll be a fantastic day. Let's talk about that. The Heiser Hearing Institute has quite a rich history, a little bit of an overview. And the fact is you are open and always have been, right? Well, yeah, we were, uh, we're essential services as we provide, uh, uh, healthcare and hearing healthcare services to, uh, disabled individuals. Um, in addition to taking care of those people that may have balance issues and things of that nature when they were at home. You know, one of the things that we had talked about last time is in order to access a lot of uh, the telehealth and the telecommuting in all those areas, you need to be able to hear. So we wanted to make sure that the community was still able to do that. Uh, we stayed open in a limited fashion during the time to take care of those emergent needs, but we've now opened all four locations. We're still following, we still follow the same CDC guidelines that we followed all along. Uh, we staffed up to make sure that we're continuing to do that and we wanted to make sure that people were able to come in and uh, if they hadn't gotten their hearing checks and things of that nature or they noticed during this time that they were having difficulty connecting through their telephones or through their TVs or through the internet because of their hearing we can help you with that. Yeah let's talk a little bit about you mentioned there is a correlation between balance and hearing, and I think that's pretty obvious, but there's also a correlation with dementia. There's a correlation, correlation with isolationism. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about, uh, I guess, warning signs and things that can be connected to hearing loss, Brett. Well, you know, the, the COVID-19 crisis has definitely magnified what those issues are because those people that were able to get by in the past now all of a sudden found themselves, wait a minute, I do have hearing loss and I can't get by. And so what we're trying to do is it, it is linked to that social isolation that we've all experienced now. For those people that are hearing, imagine your isolation that you have now, and that's what people without hearing correction and hearing loss suffer from every day. And so what we want to be able to do is help them get out into the community, help them to experience life again, and part of that is this hearing process. And as you know, with uh, he with social isolation come less comes less stimulation to the brain, then that causes or can be linked to early onset dementia and a whole host of things that happen. I mean, depression, social isolation, all those things are and have been linked to slowly losing your hearing. Yeah, and all age groups here, because I think it's important to stress that you guys are toddlers. You know, a lot of times we think when we think of hearing loss, we think of elderly folks, but, you know, people like myself. But it's all age groups, right? And, and the importance of really recognizing and being able to diagnose hearing loss early is critical. Well, yeah, I mean, we, we have a lot of programs. We test a lot of newborns. Um, if they're tested as having a, a hard of hearing or deafness, then we kind of work with the parents to get them enrolled into First Steps, which is a program that enables them to understand what it's like to have a child with hearing loss. We help them work through that. We help them work out what kind of modality they want them to speak. Some are uh, oral, some parents want sign. We work with both so that they can choose. Um, we have a school that came around in 1948 to help those parents and uh, talk toddlers who want to go to the oral route, we kind of do intensive therapies with them to help them get that process. But all of our master's level teachers have sign and can sign as well if that child is, if that's the only modality that they can have. The overall importance 
across all age groups is the communication being able to connect with that other person and you can't do that unless you can speak with them or talk to them through whatever uh, modality that makes perfect sense now during the coronavirus we talked about the fact that you're an essential service that you've been open but let's also talk about the fact that this the procedures have changed a little bit or actually you have some options you have no touch screenings you had a virtual breakfast talk a little bit about that if you would Brad I think this is really cool the, we were really excited about the virtual breakfast and it came off really well. Um, you know, more people uh, uh, came to that than we had expected. It was, you know, nonprofits for a long period of time and we are a 501c3, both the clinic and the school. You know, we have these events as fundraisers and we had to adapt and that's part of what we did. And so that virtual thing, it exceeded what our expectations were. Uh, one of the nice things is if you weren't able to go back on it, you go on our Facebook page and look at it and see what we did and, and look at all the interaction we've got some great stories from people that went through our school from people that were able to connect with the community once they got their hearing devices and so it was a really feel-good way of doing it and you know it was only 30 minutes you know when you have everybody come in it's an hour and in the morning it can be difficult but it's a 29 minute video that you can see that kind of explains what we've done for the community since 1948 Brett, you've been nice enough to bring in some visuals for us. I always stress to clients, if they can, bring some visuals. You know, television is a visual medium. If you can see things, it's easier for folks like myself to understand. So if you would, you're the expert. The models that you have on the table, what are we looking at and what are the importance of these? All right, expert is, uh, you know, you use that word loosely, all right? So uh, we do have, it's called an extended wear device, it's called Lyric, and what that is, is we put it in, uh, the audiologist will take it and put it in close uh, to the eardrum, and it will stay in between two and three months. And it's a subscription model, so what we do is, you know, this little tiny hearing aid, it's like that, whoop, Sorry, sorry, camera guy. Uh, uh, I'm not a hand model. Uh, it goes in your ear and it will go in there for that amount of time. And then what happens is, is about every two or three months you come in and we re completely replace it. And so you get that new hearing aid every for that year, every two or three months, depending on the battery. And you can shower with it. Now, swimming is something you can't really dunk your head underwater, but you don't ever have to worry about changing the battery. You don't have to worry about any of that stuff. You can take it out, but we suggest that uh, you have the audiologist always put it back in. And we can get you in on the same day notice if there's an issue with that. And that thing, uh, we have one of the most, uh, we have the largest number of lyrics in the region. Um, people come to us, we're one of their super centers and so um, uh, we're really proud of that aspect as well we is that lyric is that state-of-the-art Brett because that's obviously it's not visible at all is that right. the state-of-the-art right now it is you know uh, hearing aids change all the time there hasn't been something that we have found that works as well as this there are several other different things one of which I'll show you in a bit but uh, yeah I mean even some of, the, some of the manufacturers do their research and development at Heiser for their new algorithms to kind of design their new hearing aids that are coming out three years from now so so it's it's a pretty amazing place. Wow. Okay. And you've uh, got another model for this us. This well. other model is called completely in the ear canal. And what you do, uh, have it out here. It's also super tiny. And that you can put in. You buy these and they last for three to five years. And what you do is you just put them in the ear and they can be fit and programmed in the same day. And these are also really close to invisible you know um, they're not totally invisible they're not as invisible as the lyric is because you'll still see a little bit of something but um, this provides different uh, modalities and different uh, acoustical control that we're able to do and this will help with you know severe loss the lyric we suggest for mild to moderate so um, this is a device that has um, uh, that has been really popular lately as well for people who have been a little bit slow on the uptake and saying, hey, you know what, I'm, I'll deal with my hearing later. You tell me that they are absolutely amazed at how, how life-changing it is, right? Oh, when yeah. They finally correct their hearing, right? Well, and the thing is, is sorry, I got caught looking at you instead That's of okay. the camera. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, yes, uh, so when people do come to us and they, they really don't even realize 
how they're hearing loss. I mean, I go back to, we have this program called Listen Up where we give somebody a hearing aid who's been volunteering. And one of our first recipients was actually teaching uh, at-risk youth uh, preschool to get them ready for kindergarten. And when we went to go talk to her, she was like, well, you know, my kids are quiet. Um, you know, I'm doing the best I can, but you know, uh, they're just really quiet. So we went in there and when we fit her with the hearing aids and she heard how loud and expressive the kids were, she was just in tears. And it completely changed her life because then what oh. she was able to do was give back to what she wanted to do. She was a volunteer foster grandparent and was able to communicate and link. And I've talked about this before. One of the things we're passionate about is we're linking the generations together and communication. And, you know, especially in these times, communication is something that we all need more of and so that we can hear, listen, and understand yeah. each other. What a great story. That's a, that's a great story. And I, and I do, I've seen these Facebook videos when babies are hearing for the first time and the yeah. smile on their face because you know they they want to hear their mother's voice their father's voice laughter mm -hmm. and that's fantastic so at all ages you'll appreciate improvement in your hearing now lastly you have another model for us I, the inner ear are you going to educate me a little bit here Brett well <laughs> I have two more models this one we'll do okay. quick this is the Hearing aid, this, is, this gives us more power and more control. Uh, this one right here is a little bit bigger. It goes behind the ear. For somebody like me that doesn't have much hair, you'll be able to see it, but somebody like you, your hair will cover it. So it is also, this gives us just more, the audiologist more ability to program. That's the next size up. That's the biggest hearing aid that we have. You know, as you can see from 20 years ago to what they are now. And next time I think I'll bring in a history of hearing aids and I've got examples from 50 years ago to now. That's pretty neat. This right here, you know, the other part that we do is the cochlear implant, okay? And the cochlear implant um, is something that we do for those infants whom parents have decided that they want to try oral and those babies that are born deaf. And so, what the, and there's some sort of structural, and remember, I'm not the expert or an audiologist, I'll explain this as the best way I can. But what we do is we take this piece right here. Mm -hmm. This piece is implanted right underneath uh, the skin right here, okay? So okay. they go in there and then they take these guide wires, if you can see those, all right? There's electrodes in those. This is just a, a model, but that's kind of what it looks like. And those are guided into the cochlea, which is right there, okay? And so that cochlea, and then this processor, right here, the cochlea is kind of what helps process sound and there'll probably be a medical term and again, my wife will yell at me later. Um, but then we have this processor that kicks, uh, connects to it uh, via magnet and it transmits what the processor hears into that magnet, into the cochlea and then this becomes the ear. And that child whom learns to hear that way all of a sudden that's the way they hear. And you know, with intensive therapies and a lot of help with parental support and the programs that we have, there are those children that uh, graduate from us and you can't even tell that they were born deaf. Wow. You know, and they can that's hear amazing. and do that kind of stuff. And then we also work with, there are some uh, times where either the parent or because of the biology and anatomy of the, of the hearing loss, they still have to sign. So then that's when we teach them sign and how to communicate that way. Wow, thank goodness for technology. That's, that's amazing because it's, you know, things have changed so quickly in your, in your field yeah. and it's making a true difference in everyone's lives. Heiser Hearing Institute, again, you mentioned four locations. Uh, for those who are interested in more information, and you said you're not an audiologist, audiologist, but you can tell a CEO, you know your business, you explained it very well to me. But for Thank the you. true experts, if now because of coronavirus, maybe you've noticed that you have to crank up the, uh, the volume on the television, or you have noticed that you're not hearing conversations like you once did, now's the time to call, right Brett? Yeah, I mean, get in there, um, well, all, everybody's back full time, they're excited to see our patients and start helping you guys again. So uh, when you call, we'll take care of you and we'll get everything uh, taken care of so that you can communicate with your community. And Brett, I, I've never asked you this before, but I have to, it, your, your job must be very rewarding. Yes. I mean, it's not just helping out folks who are saying, you know, I'm losing my hearing a little bit and it's, it's starting to change my life. You're talking some people never realized what an impact or how much they were missing in life until they came to Heiser Hearing Institute. How rewarding is that for you when you get these feel-good stories? It's why I go to work every day. 
you know, uh, my office is in the school, so I get to see those kids experience and express their language and come in and not be able to express themselves and then learn how to communicate. And then I get to see those adults that get to talk and understand their grandchildren or their children for the, for, you know, and they've been missing out and hadn't realized it. And then what, what we do with the Balance Center, and that's a whole nother subject, we get people that come in that can't even stand up. And then we start to treat them and work with them, and over a period of time, we're able to rebalance them so that they can continue and not be a fall risk at home. All those things is something, is the entire reason why I come in, and the fact that all the revenues that we generate from anything that we do goes right back into the programs that are here in this community. And that's why it's so important to come to Heiser, because everything that's done at Heiser is for the community in which we all live. I can tell you're passionate about it. Again, Heiser Hearing Institute, Brett Brock Bachman, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Thank you. And coming up here, we're going to talk about beautiful weather, a nice day to take a motorcycle ride. Safety tips coming up next, courtesy of Kaufman Stigger. We are Wave 3 Listens Live.